Hello, everybody, and welcome to Poland Daily Travel, where this time we say, head east, young man. We're going in search of eastern promise to the Białystok region, about two hours, give or take a few kilometers uh, east of Warsaw. This is an area of hidden treasures, castles, palaces, wildlife, and of course, water and the great forests. The Brunitsky Palace in the center of Białystok stands out as a Baroque masterpiece, often compared in its own way to a smaller version of Versailles. Then there is the unmissable little fairy tale town of Tkochen. It lies in bucolic splendor astride the Narev River with its fine church and synagogue and restored castle. It's an undiscovered Baroque jewel. And so we scratch the surface at least to tempt you to the wonders of this beautiful and wild region of Poland. We know you're going to really enjoy these episodes. So stay tuned as Poland Daily takes you to the Białystok region, in the far east of Poland. Visit our Poland Daily Live page and subscribe to all our great programs. Thanks for watching. Hello everybody, I promised another anecdote, and this is not really an anecdote, actually. Uh, Paul, are you aware of what's about to happen? Yeah, we're gonna talk about Zamenhof. Now, who's that? He's behind us, what do you mean? No, that, what? He's standing behind us. Well, you mean that that is a, uh, a uh, representation of yes. him? Yes. It's not actually him? No. Yeah, okay, I'm just checking. That, <laughs> you know the difference between, because you know, some people today, they just have no idea between animate and inanimate objects. Okay, that's not yeah. me. That's not you? No. Okay, but you, you do accept so that some remember, people have that problem. So remember when we were in Łódź and we didn't exactly know, like we forgot who Zamenhof was and now we're standing in front of his monument. Why, and why, one wonders. Yeah. Why would anyone want to do that? Yeah. Because he invented Esperanto yeah, language. Yeah, yeah. He invented Esperanto, which is a language which does what? What kind of language is it? Do you know? I uh, something I don't know. Yeah. It sounds Spanish. It, so, no. it sounds like it sounds like it should be spoken by Basques yeah. in the hinterland of the <laughs> of something. Basque land, I guess, you mm -hmm. know. Somewhere of San Sebastian, further in. What's that place in the you know, Hemingway used to run and get run over by bulls. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But in in fact when I first heard it, I thought it was, in fact, a Spanish language. Yeah, but it's not. No, it was invented by a Polish man. Yeah. And his name is Ludwig... Zamenhof. Zamenhof, Zamenhof. And he was born in Białystok. Yeah. But, as we'll see later, his father was born in... In Tukocin. Right, yeah. which is where we're going. So, the interesting part of that is that uh, there are nine things you need to know about so Esperanto and its creator. Let's That's look here. at them. It's a, here's a couple of things you really need to know okay. about, what's his name? Ludwig Zamenhof. So Esperanto is the most popular constructed language in the world. Is that right? Yeah. Where does it say that? Uh, here. It's, oh, it is, the most yeah. popular constructed language. You mean invented, I guess they mean invented language. Okay. Yeah. I don't know who wrote this. I just got it off the internet. It's probably all wrong, but who okay. cares? Zamenhof was born a polyglot. He was born a polyglot. What does yeah. that mean? That he knew a lot of languages. A polyglot is a person who knows a lot of languages? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay, here's the street. There's a street where he was born. I don't, it doesn't give the name of it. It was in, uh, in Białystok. Renamed in his honor. It was, it's now has his name? Yeah. There's a street in Warsaw with his name too. There is, yeah. Right? Yeah, I, I see it. That was my first introduction to the name actually, mm -hmm. was seeing that on the, on the buses. I think it's the end of a place. There's actually a stop in Warsaw called Esperanto as well. Anyway, it was a, uh, was he Jewish? I think he was. He was speaking Yiddish and Russian at home and Polish. Yeah, and he grew up under, in the Russian yeah. uh, empire, that part. He wrote a play when he was just 10 years old. Oh, come on, that's bragging, isn't it? I can't you believe it was so? any good. It's like, I wrote a play too, but it was terrible. <laughs> I wrote a play when I was eight, but it was terrible. I mean, you know, I didn't, my teacher threw me out of class. What else do we need? He wrote a play. He was a linguist ophthalmologist. What is that? Do you know what that is? 
No, that you... If anybody out there knows what a linguist ophthalmologist is, would you please uh, examine our eyes uh, verbally? Um, Leo Tolstoy <clears throat> learned... I wish it's I could just throw to... these away, but I can't throw these away because they will blow away into the fountain over here and we'll get arrested. But, but uh, wait, what? listen, before Tolstoy, Zabanhoff was only 19 when he finished working on the first version of Esperanto. And then his father burned his first book. His father burned yeah. his first book? What a nice guy. He, well, he his... probably read that first play. According oh. to the family legend, he wanted his son to pay more attention to his studies. Pay more attention? The guy invented a language. How can he pay more attention to studies? So now about Tolstoy. Tolstoy learned Esperanto. Yeah, Tolstoy, what a bore. He was always doing boring things. I like him. You like Tolstoy? Yeah. I mean, uh, what did he ever write that you like? He was a writer, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Are you, or a are farmer. You, are you checking my knowledge of no, literature? No, no. I just thought maybe you had a favorite by, a by Tolstoy. Yeah, you don't have a favorite? The first Warsaw, the, the first Esperanto book came out in Warsaw on what date? The 14th of July, 1887. I bet you didn't know that. No. You didn't know that. You see, I did not. aren't you glad no. I, I gave you this? Esperanto was meant as a manifesto of peace. Did you know that? Interesting. No, no I did I not. Didn't, I, didn't know, I didn't know that either. It was the Zamenhof's way of promoting the peaceful coexistence of different people in different cultures. And he was, of course, very concerned with the Jewish issue in, uh, in Eastern Europe. I mean, this part of the world was, was very, there was a huge Jewish population back when Zamenhof was, uh, was writing his, uh, inventing a language and writing a play. Yeah. He wrote the play first. What age did he write the play at? Ten. Yeah. Eight. <laughs> Eight. Um, he developed his own ideology. Homaronismo. Yeah, what is that? No idea what that is. Homaronismo? It's based on the Jewish philosopher Hillel. Like Hillel House, I guess. Yeah. yeah? To Jewish uh, clubs. Uh, it was an attempt to reform Judaism so that its believers would no longer be victims of anti-Semitic propaganda. Okay, so maybe the whole idea of the language was if if people uh, if people share a common language yeah. and they won't misunderstand yeah. each other as much. Right? Makes sense. Do you think that's true? Could be. Zamenhof avoided labeling his own nationality. He uh, labeled uh, yes. Because it was a very mixed up, he was, he wasn't sure, was he a Russian Jew? Was he a Jew from Russia? Was he Polish? I mean, you know, yeah. who knew back then? Because Poland was partitioned. And the last thing is Esperanto speakers were targeted during the Holocaust. Now, I didn't know that. Um, this is his mother, isn't it? Yeah. Should we? Should Here's we? a picture of his... Yeah, I already showed it. Did you show the yeah. picture of his mom? Yeah, you did? Okay. Good. He died in Warsaw on 14th of April, 1917, so he didn't even live to see the end of World War I. Yeah. So he must have been very unhappy at the end of his life. He had two sons and a daughter. He had two sons and a dog? Daughter. Oh, a daughter. Okay, sorry, I misunderstood that. It's not nice to call a lady uh, that. Um, the rest of it's sad stuff because his daughter died during the no, war. No, Esperanto is spoken by two million people. That's, oh, that's the last one. Yeah. Esperanto is spoken by two million people. It is not spoken by us, but perhaps you should speak it to promote understanding in the world between people who often misunderstand each other because... Why? They don't share the same language. Correct. Jeez, you don't need me. Fantastic over here. Hey, we're in Bialystok, we're standing in a nice sunshine, and we say thank you to Mr. Ludwig Zamenhof, a great genius. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And thank you. Like us on YouTube, give us that thumbs up. It means a lot. See you next time. Say goodbye, Paula. Bye. <laughs>